you are welcome to Christian Singles Podcast. My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. And in this episode, I'll be sharing on sexual compatibility. Sexual compatibility in marriage. In other words, how do you ensure that the person you want to get married to will be compatible to you sexually, particularly as God's children, that we are not expected to fornicate or to engage in sexual activity before marriage? This is a question I get asked often, uh, even though I find it quite um, interesting in a way, but I get asked often, and um, I feel that it's important that we share on it and look at the scripture that addresses this particular issue. Now, every Christian, every child of God who is born again, should know that we should not engage in sin, as in, it should even be taken for granted. You should all know. The Bible says that fornication should not be once named amongst us. At times when people ask this question, they are almost asking the question as if to say that maybe God doesn't know what he's doing. You know, they are like, okay, you say we should not have sex. So how do, how do I know who is compatible with me? And I'm like, I didn't say you should not have sex. The word of God says flee fornication. It's not a man. It's not my message. It's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> I'm nothing. It has nothing to do with the preacher. That's what the word of God says. Keep yourself. So when people say like that, at times I'm like, okay, you, you feel you, you want to threaten God? Okay, go ahead. Go and do it. Nobody, nobody is going to hold you. Go and do it. Just be ready for the consequence, you know. But for those who may have considered it genuinely, not because they want to sin, but because it's a thought that they have actually considered. And you know, people have had stories. Like, we have had stories of people who are struggling sexually in marriage, um, the wife is not enjoying sex, the husband cannot satisfy her, or the wife cannot satisfy the husband, you know, things like that. People have had issues like that. Or maybe you hear of a story that, um, which I have also had of a lady getting married only to discover that the guy is impotent, you know, and it's easier to pretend as a, as a brother, you know, to hide such a thing. And so women say, okay, so how do we know? How can I know if he can perform? And they ask it almost uh, sarcastically, you know, as if to say that, so why should we not do it? How will I now know? And I'm like, okay, go ahead and do it if you want to do it. If you do it and he can perform, and on your wedding night, he can no longer perform, what are you going to do? You know, it's like the foolishness of saying you must get married before, before you, you must get pregnant before you, are, you get married. A child of God doesn't do that thing. You don't even need to consider it. And I've had sister come to me and say, this is what he says. And I'm like, you don't even need to think twice to know what to do. Some will say, sir, I don't know what to do. Or I don't know how to break up. What do you mean by I do? you don't know how to break up? Just sit down in your daddy's house. That's how to break up. Just sit down in your daddy's house. Somebody calls you, don't pick the call. He's a, breaking up is as simple as that. It's as simple as saying, I'm not interested. Except you are now struggling emotionally because you've become emotionally attached to that person. So because of all of these experiences, it's possible for people to now begin to say, should we now keep ourselves before marriage? Shouldn't we try to test? Shouldn't we try to, to at least ascertain a few things? Yet the word of God says that you should flee fornication. The word of God expects that you will marry as a virgin. So how do you balance all of this? I'm going to read a scripture to you. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The Bible says, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him 
and help meet for him. You know, at times we don't pay attention to scriptures. I will make him and help meet for him. What exactly does this mean? God is simply saying, I am going to custom made his help. That woman will be made specifically for him. I am going to factor everything that has to do with that woman. You know, I have a wonderful wife. One of the things I struggle to do is to go to a tailor to measure me. So what my wife does is that she will take clothes that I already have that are very fitting. She will take it to the tailor with new clothes and they will use that measurement to make my dress. So that dress is tailor made for me. It is my size. So my size had been factored in into it. You know, when you look at the, the way they manufacture aircraft, there are times that the engine may be manufactured in Japan and then the fissile lodge or the body and the whole other component are made in the United States. Some may even be made in other places and then they bring it together. But you see, the, the people building the engine in Japan, they have factored in the fissile lodge in U.S., how everything is going to fit. They are doing it to measurement. It's not as if they are just doing their own thing. Using any measurement they like. You know, using any diameter they like. No. Everything is measured. So that by the time they bring this, this engine and this aircraft together. Even though they, they were made from different continents. They fit in perfectly. And they begin to work together. Has there been a time that you want to buy a bulb? And you are worried that your lamp holder will not fit? You are not worried. You just go and buy the bulb and put it in the lamp in the lamp holder. Why? Because the size had been measured. The bulb has been made to the size of the lamp holder. So that's what God says. So when God is guiding you or leading you to marry somebody, He had factored in everything about you into that person, including your sexuality. Everything about your life. Everything about your sex life, everything has been factored in. So you can comfortably marry as a virgin and have a great sex life. So don't let the devil whisper this wickedness to your ears and begin to suggest to you that you see, how can God say that you should not have sex? How can you be sure? What of this? What of that? What of this? You know, it's like when people say you must get pregnant before you get married. I know a particular lady who did that, who got pregnant, and then because when she got pregnant, they now did the wedding. Eight months or so, she lost the pregnancy. She got pregnant again, she lost the pregnancy. We are trusting God now, she's on the third pregnancy now, and we are trusting God that this pregnancy, by the grace of God, will stay. You see, that's the foolishness of men. You think that you are too smart, you can think everything by yourself. You can't. You can't. So, understand that your life is fitted. You see, God knows your purpose. That's why, allow God to guide you to marry. Ask God to show you mercy. It's the best way to marry. If I had to come to this world several times, I wouldn't change the way I got married. I would stick to the Lord. You don't know the heart of a person. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Above all things. He says, who can know it? Say, I the Lord, I search your heart. Only God knows the heart of a person. That lady that you think she's beautiful. She has back, she has front. You don't know her heart. That brother that is shiny. Everything is shiny about him. You don't know his heart. He, you, we recently heard of people who will... Um, or let me even share this. Of, of a sister who married a, a brother... And the, the brother, after they had a child, this husband was trying to use her for money rituals and was beginning to gradually charm and affect her and cast some spell on her over a period of time until God finally delivered this sister. So you don't know the heart of people. It is God that knows the heart. He does not only know the heart. He knows your body. He knows your makeup. He knows what you like. He knows what you don't like. He knows how much you want it or how less you want it. 
And so God factor in all of this into your process of your choice making. So when God said, I will make for him a help meet, a help that is custom made, that is customized. You know when they say something is customized for you? It will, you know, it's like a tailor. When a tailor wants to make a dress, he first of all comes with measurement. He takes all your measurements. And then he takes the material. And, and then he cuts the material and makes it into a beautiful cloth for you. Do you think God will do less? Do you think God will not take your measurement before he guides you to somebody? God has measured. In fact, God knows your measurement. He doesn't even need to measure. From the foundation of the world, God had known your measurement. And so, he factored in anything. So, you don't need to test anything. Keep yourself and get married. My prayer is that you will receive grace to, to keep your body, which is the temple of God. That you will not defy your body on any ground, on any account, in the name of Jesus. That you will not listen to the lie of Satan that wants you to defile your body. You will get married. You will enjoy your marriage. You will enjoy sex in your marriage by the grace of God. My name once again is Olusha Gumukulu. We bring this podcast. We send it out regularly, almost on a daily basis. But in case somebody had forwarded it to you and you want to be receiving it also on WhatsApp, all you need to do is to write us, send us your full name and your marital status. Please, it's very important that you tell us your full name and marital status because we have podcasts for married Christians and we have another one for general Christian growth. So let us add you to the appropriate broadcast list. Please don't send us your number. If you send us your number, you will still not get it because we are not sending it individual. It's a broadcast. So you must have our name saved on your contact before you can receive it. So save our number, which I'll call sh- shortly on WhatsApp, and then message us just with your full name and then state your marital status. Just write John uh, Jane single. That's all. And then we will add you to the appropriate broadcast list. We will also like to introduce you to our free marriage course for singles. If you are interested, all you need to do is to write us by email, also indicating that you are single, and we will send to you the enrollment form. The course is free from beginning to the end. The number is plus 234-818-615-7852. And the email address is BibleLoveHelper at gmail. Dot com. We also have lots of videos on YouTube. Just search for hashtag Bible Love Helper on YouTube and you can watch several of our videos that has to do with our single Christians, relationship, courtship, getting married, etc. It is our prayer that the Lord will guide you. His mercy will speak for you. You will not choose wrongly and that your marriage will be part of the marriage that we extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God on earth in the name of Jesus. Until next time, when we bring another episode, please remember to share this podcast with your friends and other believers so that together we can learn how to build a Christ-centered marriage. God bless you.